Chapter 8 A Mystery and a Mouse I feel better the next morning after a big hug from Ma, a big helping of Bape's eggs scrambled with spices and onions, and, uh oh, one of his silly jokes. If Hungarians eat goulash and Mexicans eat tacos, what do Chinese eat? I shrug. Chow, mainly, howls Bape. Get it? He punches me in the shoulder. I roll my eyes, but now, instead of sighs, I am full of energy. I'm ready to take a walk, another walk, in the woods. Maybe, I think, I will find the owner of the five-toed footprints. I take a piece of rutley from a dinner plate, from a plate on the counter, and head out. But on the second floor landing, I see the newly married couples, the doves. I notice them because they are gazing at each other with starry eyes, and because there is a bird-shaped plaque on their door that read, reads, The Lovey Doves, Tom and Michelle. The Lovey Doves are too busy with each other to notice me. They hug goodbye, they kiss goodbye, and bleh, they hug goodbye again. I try not to gag as I hurry past them. Safe in the woods, away from all that hugging and kissing, I break the bread into pieces and toss them to the birds. A squirrel jumps down from the tree. He shakes his tail at the birds, scattering them to the sky. This makes me think of my red wish bird that was squashed by Landlady Crisp. Do squashed wishes come true? I wipe the crumbs off my hands and try to ignore the tight, ticklish feeling that is growing in my stomach again. Instead, I look for new footprints. I look beside the creek. I look along the stone fence. And I found a lot of footprints. Squirrel footprints, raccoon footprints, skunk footprints. Bummer. I do not find any new kid footprints. I am trudging back to the apartment house past the fence and the droopy tree when I see them. Dozens of them scattered all over the ground. Little, brown, O-shaped. They seem familiar. I pick one up and sniff it. It smells sweet. I lick it. It tastes sweet. And all of a sudden, I know what these are. I have seen them advertised on television. I can even sing the commercial. I sing it now. What cinnamon sweet and so good to eat, the happiest, healthiest breakfast treat, it's cinnamon oat toasties. I hold the last note until the birds start flapping and the squirrels start chattering. Then, as my voice fades, I start to wonder, are these oat toasties meant to be a trail? A trail through the woods, like in that story Hansel and Gretel? Maybe, I think, someone needs the cereal to find their way home. But, no, this is not a cereal trail. It, this is a cereal spill. Why would someone spill their cereal way out here in the woods? Then a squirrel scrambles past my feet. He stuffs his cheeks with oat toasties. Now I understand. Someone else is feeding the animals, too. Someone else who likes cereal. Could it be the same someone who leaves footprints and handprints? This, I say out loud, is a mystery. I ponder this mystery all the way home, but the minute I step into the apartment house, all mysterious thoughts vanish because a mouse is running down the hall. Landlady Crisp is running after it. She swings a broom. The door to the first floor apartment flies open. What's going on? What's happening? demands Mrs. Pendergast. Mouse! cries Landlady Crisp. Eek! cries Mrs. Pendergast. She slams the door. Landlady Crisp, I cry, you have gotten a pet. That's not a pet, she pants. That's just more work. She aims and swats. The mouse escapes through a crack in the floorboards. If it's not one thing, it's another, huffs Landlady Crisp. She stamps down to her workroom and I follow. Downstairs, Landlady Crisp searches through the cabinets until she finds some mouse traps. What are those for, I ask. I'm going to have to catch the filthy pests. She answers, Oh, what a lot of work it will be. Baiting, setting, waiting, emptying, over and over again. It will go on for weeks. After all, where there's one mouse, there's fifty, you know. I did not know, I say. It's true, she says. It will take hours every day. You can bet your sweet bippy on it. Sweet bippy? Even though I have not heard that American expression before, I am pretty sure I know what a bippy is. But is it really sweet? I try not to giggle as Landlady Crisp moans. How will I get it all done? How? 
I know she is not asking me. I know grown-ups talk to themselves all the time. They ask themselves questions that they do not expect anyone to answer. But I do have an answer. It's a perfect answer. A baladi, I cry. A cat. Landlady Crisp, you need a cat. In Bombay, people who have cats do not have undaris. Mice. Landlady Crisp looks up from her mouse trap. A cat, she repeats. Yes, I say, a cat would save you much work. Snap, goes one of the traps. Ouch, hollers Landlady Crisp. She shakes the trap off her thumb. Cats do not get caught on fingers either, I say. Landlady Crisp turns. Her eyes are like blue ice. I take a step backward. It is time for me to scat, I say. I move my sweet bippy up the stairs. But the next morning, before I walk into the woods, I walk down to the basement. I want to see if Landlady Crisp has caught any mice. I open the workroom door and I do not believe my eyes. There is a cat sitting on the table. A green-eyed, gray-furred cat. The cat licks a white-tipped paw, then rubs it over a white-tipped ear. Meow, says the cat. Landlady Crisp, I cry, you've gotten a pet. Can I have a pet, too? This is not a pet, she replies. This is a super deluxe mouse trap. I rub the cat between the ears. She purrs and rubs me back. She is very affectionate for a mouse trap. I say, does she have a name? Landlady Crisp snorts. <laughs> Do I name my wrench? Do I name my toilet plunger? No. That cat's a tool, just like all the rest. It doesn't need a name. I watch the cat leap off the table. It weaves in and out and around Landlady Crisp's ankles. That cat likes you, I say. Humph, <laughs> says Landlady Crisp. But she bends and runs her hand down the cat's silky back. You know what you should name that cat, I ask? You should name her Trapper. Landlady Crisp straightens. Trapper, Snapper, Blapper, she says. One name's as good as the other. Now get lost, kid. That cat's got work to do. Get lost, I say. Scram, beat it, scat. Or boogie, I grin. Go, growls Landlady Crisp. And I go.